Welcome to the Southern States Wrestling Power Half Hour. Bo James here. Very special program this week. We have canceled our regular scheduled Southern States events here for the television this week as we're going to pay tribute to the man you saw at the beginning of the program. Without a doubt, the biggest name box office star here in East Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky, Southwest Virginia. Talking about the King of Kings sport, the number one hillbilly, old motor mouth, the back street brawler, sweet, lovable, scientific wrestling, old brother Ron. Talking about Ron Wright. Woke up Tuesday with some sad news that we had lost Ron. And right, automatically us here at Southern States Wrestling went into mode to put together this program. I want to tell you real fast now. Some of the clips you're going to see here today, they're not high definition. They're, they're a little grainy. They're dark. But for historical value, we're going to bring them to you here today. Some of this stuff has never been seen on television. Some of it's not been seen in decades. So we're glad you're here. We want to tell you about the man himself, the legendary... Ron Wright of Kingsport, Tennessee. Like his brother Don and his friend turned foe Whitey Caldwell, Ron's first wrestling experience came at the old Kingsport Boys Club, where all three young men were standouts and they had caught the ear and eyes of wrestling promoter Mickey Barnes, who was the number one promoter in this part of the country, promoting weekly events in Kingsport, Johnson City, and Bristol, and events all across the Mountain Empire. In 1956, local promoter Buddy Russell, who promoted independent wrestling cards and amateur boxing put on an event at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium that drew a large crowd. It wasn't the boxers, it wasn't the, just the fact that wrestling was there because wrestling was there every Wednesday with the top stars of the day. The crowd was drawn to come see two young men take their first step into stardom, into legendary careers. We're talking about Ron Wright and Whitey Caldwell. It was not long before Established promoter Mickey Barnes come calling on Whitey Caldwell and Ron Wright and they went to work for him. First Whitey, a few years older, was in the ring wrestling and Ron was putting the ring up, selling programs, doing whatever he could to be a part of wrestling. Shortly after that, Ron stepped in the ring as a referee. Ron's first big break in wrestling came in November 1961 when he faced Whitey Caldwell, who at the time was television champion on WJHL TV and Studio Wrestling. Ron threw Whitey out of the ring so hard when Whitey hit the ground it broke his shoulder. From preliminary matches straight into main events went Ron Wright after putting out the local hero and local champion. These two men would feud the next several years, drawing big crowds, setting box office records not only in Kingsport, Johnson City, and Bristol, but places like Gate City, Marion, Virginia, Knoxville, Tennessee, Morristown, Tennessee. What I want to do right now is I want to take a look. This is very short, maybe three minutes of film. Thanks to Nancy Caldwell for preserving this and, and giving this to me many years ago to make sure that we could show this. And it's the only surviving film known of Whitey Caldwell. It's the only surviving film known of Mickey Barnes' promotion in Kingsport. It's dark and it's grainy, but it's from October of 1962. This is the first big time main event of Ron Wright versus Whitey Caldwell. Loser gets their head shaved on the stage at the Civic Auditorium. Let's take a walk back through history.
There you saw just a little piece of history of the historic feud of Ron Wright and Whitey Caldwell. The biggest feud, the greatest feud, the bloodiest feud ever in this part of the world, maybe anywhere in the world. Ten years, an entire decade, these two guys on again, off again. They even teamed up at one point in time, a lot of people don't know that, holding the Southern Tag titles, defeating the Dupree brothers in Kingsport for those titles. But what about their feud? Let's go back to that for just a second. Every kind of match you can imagine. Chain matches, hair matches, Texas death matches. Ron put his horse up against Whitey's belt. Whitey won his belt and sold it at auction at Chihuahua Park in Knoxville, right there at the one wrestling fan ringside. These two went after each other like no other two wrestlers in the history of this profession. And they set box office records everywhere they went. Most of them still stand to this day. Ron Wright was the evil to Whitey Caldwell's good. And the people came to see Ron lose because he knew how to get under their skin and he could make them madder than anybody else. Not just in the ring, but also speaking. Let's take a look at Ron Wright in an interview from 1973 with Big Jim Hess. This no. Yeah, I want to go through this first. You've had a whole raft Steve of Kovac to said that there was only one way to keep Ron Wright in the ring when the going gets rough. Let me, let me Put a wire fence around the ring, he says. That will keep Ron Wright in and keep Don Wright out. And that's exactly what the main event's going to be this coming Friday night, Mr. Wright. You're going to do what? Put a fence around there so that you can To keep you in the ring where you belong. You don't have to put a fence around no ring to keep me in the ring. You wouldn't stay in it last night. No, I wouldn't stay in it last night. That Kovacs come out there with a pair of steel nuts and a blackjack. You, you used the steel nuts first. Beat me in the head with you used the nuts first. No then he took them away from you. You sat down and keep your mouth shut. I'll tell you what happened down there last oh, night. Let's hear some I took Kovacs down there and had the man whoop so bad it wasn't even funny. <laughs> John Kazana run down there and give him a pair of steel nuts and a blackjack, and you people wonder why I got out of the ring and went back to the dressing room. That's exactly the man's not got enough guts and get up to get down there and get in the ring and wrestle me with what God gave him his only bare hands. He's got to come out there and bring ropes, steel nuts, anything in the world that he can get his hands on to try to beat me, and he wasn't man enough to do it. He wasn't man enough to take me up there with all of the things that he had and put me down there and beat me. Do you agree with that? No, who used the nuts first? I you didn't did. have no steel nuts. You You've did. never seen me go to the ring and take a pair of steel nuts oh. with me. You always come up here and accuse me of doing something underhanded and low down. Right. Even accused Donnie of coming down there in the ring last he night. He did. Him. He didn't do no yes, such he a thing. Did. He only came down there and helped me from the edge of the ring back to the dressing room, and that's all that the man had to do. At one time, and Donnie and no Kovacs other. were in the ring, and you were outside the ring. I was going to the dressing room, oh, and Donnie was up there trying to tell the referee that Kovacs had steel nuts out there and a blackjack, and he ought to take them away from me. When he couldn't make the referee that's understand right. what the man was doing, he, like a gentleman, got out of the ring, and we went back to the dressing room and quit. And now you've got the gall and the nerve to come down here and tell me that you're going to put me in the ring and cage me up like an animal or right. something. Like that gorilla you used to whip up on, as you said. Let me tell you something. I'm a better gentleman than that. My horses at home and the gorilla that we've got, we don't even have to keep them fenced up and put them in a cage. We let them roam around free like they're supposed to be. And it takes a gutless, backhanded, yellow back, no good something to come down here to put a fence up around the ring to keep a raster in the ring because I'm much better of man than that. You don't need it. Well, that's exactly what we're going to have, Mr. Wright. We're going to have a fence put around, well, put around the uh, ring to keep you in yeah. and keep Don out of the ring. He doesn't like They've the got fence. No beef. You've not got no business coming down here and putting a rev, putting a ring under wire down there. Why not? That's the most backhanded, backstabbing, underhanded thing that I've ever seen in my life. I would stay in the ring if you put a raster up there with me that's got enough guts to get in there without bringing chairs, blackjacks, steel nuts, anything he can get his hands on up there in that ring to hit me with. Friday we, we inspect and examine and search both of you. No, you don't have to inspect and examine and search me. I'm very much too much of a gentleman to have to have a man to come down there and search me. Mr. That don't like I'm crooked and low down to try to carry something in the ring to take in there to hit a man with. You think you're that's Mr. Not Clean the kind or of the That's right. I'm one of the most clean, cleanest, and scientific wrestlers that they've ever had down here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And for this promoter to come down here and insult me 
Like they've got to put a wire around that ring to keep me in the ring. That's the most insulting thing I've ever had put That's on That's what they're going to do, buddy. Other than Whitey Caldwell, Ron had great matches. Tremendous feuds with the likes of Don Carson, Louis Talay, Ronnie Garvin. But I would have to say that Big Jim Hess was probably his second greatest opponent over the years because Ron and Big Jim had a verbal bout each and every week on Knoxville TV. Now, Ron had a lot of great lines that he used in his interviews about how smart he was, and he brain looked a man before he ever got in the ring. People broke out in prayer meetings before he killed the man during the match. But one of his greatest lines ever was the East Tennessee dog whooping. What is an East Tennessee dog whooping? Let's go to the mid-70s when Ronnie Garvin was introduced to the East Tennessee dog whooping firsthand from the master Ron Wright. There you saw an example of the East Tennessee dog whooping. You know, Ron's career, whether it was singles, whether it was tags, whether he was a fan favorite or a rule breaker, it was successful. Everywhere Ron went, he won titles. He was in the main event, and he drew big money. When we come back, we're going to show you another side of Ron Wright, and we're going to talk about a side that you may not know about his career. But as we go to break, let's take a look at Ron Wright in Chihuahua Park making a special challenge to Louis Talay. Hey everyone, it's your friend Misty James. I'm here to tell you it's never too early to protect your family with life insurance and have peace of mind for you and your loved ones. Funerals double in price every 10 years. Do you have the money or benefits needed? Your loved ones could be left with medical bills and other expenses. Protect them now. Call my friend Lance Dykes, independent agent in Tennessee and Virginia, who has common sense approach to life insurance with no pressure sales. He is someone who will listen to you and work for you. Affordable premiums that will never increase, no medical exam, no decrease in coverage, and the policy cannot be canceled as long as you pay your premium. Top insurance carriers. Call Lance today and protect your family. Welcome back to the Southern States Wrestling Power Half Hour. Bo James here. I want to remind you real fast, you can keep up with SSW at any time on Twitter at SSW Wrestling One or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Southern States Wrestling. Now, if you're joining us late here today, it's a sad day around Southern States Wrestling. It's a sad day around the entire Mountain Empire and the wrestling world is this week we lost Ron Wright and we're paying tribute to him here today on this special program. Now, in the first segment, we talked about Ron Wright the Wrestler. Ron's in-ring career itself is Hall of Fame worthy. Southeastern Heavyweight Champion, Tennessee Heavyweight Champion, Tennessee Tag Team Champions and Southeastern Tag Team Champions with his brother Don Wright and a few other people like Tiny York and Fred White along the years. But there was more to Ron Wright than just Ron Wright the wrestler. After many years of battles and fighting the fans and riots and in-ring injuries, Ron kind of slowed his wrestling career down in the 70s as he started promoting, working behind the scenes. Most of the events that took place in the city of Kingsport, Ron Wright was the promoter of them. Ron also became ringside manager, trainer, and confidant and mentor to a lot of young wrestlers. He had a successful career as a manager 
Great success with the tag team of Phil Higgerson and Dennis Condry. That trio together with Ron Wright seemed to be unbeatable in this part of the country for a long time as you can see here on the screen now. By 1979, Ron was doing more promoting than he was wrestling or managing. Running the all-star wrestling promotion out of Kingsport in Knoxville and all the surrounding East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia area. After a severe shoulder injury in the early 1980s, Ron completely retired from professional wrestling, managing and promoting. He not only left wrestling, he left East Tennessee, moving his family to the Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina area where he worked as a pressman. Now, Ron was out of sight, out of mind, it seemed, for professional wrestling, and especially here in East Tennessee, people had not seen him for several years. When in 1987, he just reappeared, wanting to help the world's strongest man, Doug Furness, a former UT football standout and a powerlifting champion. That little association between the two of them fell apart real fast. Now, let's take a look at Ron Wright and Doug Furness, a little history here, and then we're going to see Ron Wright, the manager of the Mongolian Stomper, 1988. I've asked Doug Furness to join me right now because he's obviously a very unhappy man over what occurred recently. Yes, I am, Mr. Sully. At uh, uh, Friday night in Knoxville, Tennessee, we had a match, a, a Texas death match with Buddy Landell, and uh, I ha had him go on, and, and we're going to see a piece here, and it's going to show just exactly what happened. Uh, uh, I'm not happy at all about it. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a look now at what we're talking about. We're referring, of course, to a Texas death match between Buddy Landell and uh, Doug Furness. And, of course, here's a man who's broken 18 world uh, weightlifting records. And you had Mr. Landell going. I had him going. He had, uh, uh, he had come out, and, he, and we, I took him on the first fall. Uh, Texas death match, you know, the falls don't count. You got that. And, and being a rookie, it was, you know, it was, it was a tough match to go. Landell's a tough guy. But then he comes in, he gets a gimmick out, and he busts me. He gets a couple of falls on me. And then right here, about the end of the match, uh, I've had about all of him on one. I finally got, got the knuckles from him, and I'm trying to tear his face off right now. Well, I can certainly understand that. Of course, I know that you had taken uh, three straight falls on the man and had him in uh, pretty dire straits. But then, of course, a most unusual situation uh, came about because, uh, and we'll, I guess we're going to see it here in just a moment or two, but suddenly... Uh, uh, as you were up there on the top ropes, things going very much your way. No question about the fact that uh, the Nature Boy Buddy Landell was gone, and then suddenly the lights went the out. Lights went out. Uh, I was waiting for the count. Didn't hear anything, so I got back up, and I was going to fish him up. About that time, Ron Wright jumps in. I didn't know he was behind me. He gives me a big bang over the head with a, a, a bucket, a trash can, or whatever it is. I know. I know I'm out. I couldn't see anything at all. And then uh, see what happens here. He picks the red. This is the first time I've seen he picks the red. He throws, throws Landell on top of me. Landell, he wasn't going to make the count. They get rid of the bucket. Here we go. Gets the count. Then you get 20 seconds and a 10 count. You know, it's just uh, it's just another one of those deals. Ron Wright's uh, giving me the shaft again. It all started out. He was my manager, and now he's on. You know, he's got his uh, little nasty boy there, Landell, who's bloody and would have lost the match. Well, of course, it did cost you the match, as a matter of fact. And, of course, it was once again. Uh, some diabolical cunning on the part of uh, one uh, gentleman here, Ron Wright, who uh, obviously put the lights out in uh, Tennessee this time instead of putting the lights out in Georgia. I'll tell you what, I can understand how you feel, but I would like to have you stay and listen and watch some comments that were made by Ron Wright regarding this situation. Well, all due respect to you, I, I don't really care anything at all about what Ron Wright has to say. I know that uh, he interferes in another one of my matches, or he'll be against me again with... Uh, goofball Landell and, and when we do I'm gonna get a chance to get a hold of him I'm not really interested in what he has to say uh, the man's old uh, um, he needs to be in a rest home all right well I can't uh, first of all I'm not gonna argue with him you know a guy who's got 18 world records that he's broken in weightlifting I uh, sure as heck this guy isn't gonna argue with him but I'll tell you what I think all of you should uh, hear the comments made by Ron Wright let me tell everybody out there that's watching this team, you've seen just what happened to Doug Furniture on this tape today. He started this when he hit me and I and busted my up with a cinder block and I had to go and have surgery on the thing in North Carolina. He went a little step too far when he hurt my brother's neck down here a few weeks ago, but we pulled one over on him and it ain't never been pulled before. I slipped my brother in the building tonight, turned the lights off while I got in there and done what needed to be done to Doug Furnish. Certainly one of the most successful uh, managers in the sport of professional wrestling is with me right now. 
Not only is he a manager, but he's a coach and a trainer as well. I'm referring, of course, to Ron Wright. And uh, Mr. Wright, uh, you do have two very impressive athletes. Oh, Dad, I've got two of the toughest athletes in the wrestling in the world today. And you know, it's a shame. I used to be one of the toughest wrestlers, too. But I've had, in the past few years, a very, very bad heart. And all I can do is sit at ringside and coach these men. But the, with a bad heart like I've got, I can never get involved in any matches. I can't interfere. That's the reason you always see me there, being a perfect, well-dressed gentleman in the ringside. Well, now, I do have people that have come up to me and complained about the fact that you do, in fact, interfere. No, no, no. Look, these people around here, these are Tennessee people. They're some of the biggest liars in the world. That's the reason I had to move completely out of the state of Tennessee, because I didn't like living here where all of the liars was at. They'll sit up here and tell you anything, but all you've got to do is keep your eye on me sitting there in the corner, and you know I never interfere ever in a match. Why in the world would I have to interfere with these men's matches when I've got the two toughest men in the world right here in the corner? Don't have to interfere. Don't have to give them any help. Just a little professional coaching from the sideline. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got, uh, this is a match that took place about three weeks ago, and I would like to have you explain, if you will, uh, the Mongolian Stompers' actions. All the, all the stompers done is just like I've told him to do. Put that man flat of his back on that man and stomp his head off. Just keep the cameras on it. All he's doing is beating the man's head. If you get the camera around there, you'd see me sitting in the corner being a perfect gentleman. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. I'm trying to help the poor man back up in the ring. That's all I've done. Didn't do a thing to him. We certainly have a, a difference in ocular observation in this situation. Well, so what you need to do is go to the eye doctor and have your glasses examined because I've got a funny feeling you need a new set, Gordon. I see. Well, uh, I'm sure all of you who are watching, uh, this match took place three weeks ago in Knoxville at the Grand Ballroom. And again, you see the Mongolian stomper doing what he does best. Just what I told him to do. Put him flat of his back and lay that number 14 boot to his head. He's done got him bleeding around the hairline there real bad now. He's got the man at his mercy. All right, well, he's got the three the count on him. The man got his hands up, and that was all of it. These people around here just need to stay tuned. Keep their eyes on me and these two men because I want to tell you something, Mr. Soley. We're going to make wrestling history right here in this part of the country. You can take your money and put it in the bank and bet on what I'm telling you. All right, the comments from Ron Wright, who is the manager, trainer, confident, if you will, of the dog and yes. of the Mongolian stomper. Well, gentlemen, I I, uh, I appreciate you coming out. It's been our pleasure, and the next time we're out here, I don't want you trying to lie anything and put any lies in these people's minds about me interfering because I have a hard time with the bad heart of God just coming to and from the ring with my men. We well, appreciate you. All right. Here again, we see you in the ring, and it certainly appears to me that you're very much involved. trying to pick the poor man up off the floor to help him back to the dressing room that was all i was trying to do mr sully anybody with good eyesight can see that all i tried to do was help the man up on his feet to get him back there in the dressing room before the stomper here practically killed the man then what did we have we got a bunch of idiots that come running out of the dressing room get out here and interfere in my match interfering with my match that's all he was doing we had to get rid of them and get them out of the ring to put them back there where they belong because they did not have any business of coming out there and getting their nose in my wrestling ring well you have made your point abundantly clear, and I think the bullet is making his point. See, that's what he was doing. The bullet didn't have no business coming out there, interfering with my match under any There you saw the trouble that Ron Wright could cause when he's not even involved in a match. And then you saw the trouble that he caused the ringside as a manager. Now don't go away when we come back. More about the legend, the man, the king of Kingsport, the number one hillbilly, Ron Wright. Misty, you know the biggest thing in the world? The biggest thing is life and death. That's because true. you will die one day.
Yes. There's only one guy that can take care of all this. And who is that guy? That's right, Lance Dykes. That's exactly right. Lance, listen, I am Derek King from Wrestling With Death on WG in America every Tuesday night at 9 p.m., by the way. I will let you know that this is a guy to call because you want him to take care of all your insurance prices, right? That's right. So listen, Lance Dykes, you give him a call. Missy, we're giving him a call. That's right. And we'll make sure that everything is taken care of. Remember, Lance Dykes, life insurance. back to the Southern States Wrestling Special here this week as we pay tribute to Ron Wright. Now in the first segment we saw Ron the wrestler. The second segment we saw Ron the promoter and the manager. As we close the program today we want to talk about Ron Wright and what he leaves behind. Ron Wright was a man with a multitude of fans that loved him. A family that loved him. Many friends across this region and across the eastern part of the United States. He's someone that each and every person that ever come in contact with him respected. Whether you were a wrestling fan or wrestling or promoter or just somebody that knew him at the local racetracks. Ron Wright is king sport. You look around the city, you see many organizations over the years that he helped fund by fundraisers through the wrestling events that he promoted. School organization, scout troops, ball teams, Parks and Rec of King Sport for many years was funded through wrestling at the Civic Auditorium. Ron Wright was one of a kind. He is an East Tennessee original. You know, most big stars out there around the country, whether it was Johnny Weaver in Charlotte or Mr. Wrestling Number 2 in Atlanta or Tommy Rich in Atlanta or, or out in, in Portland, Oregon with Dutch Savage, they weren't homegrown. Right here in Tennessee, we had our homegrown hero. Right here in East Tennessee with Ron Don Wright and Whitey Caldwell. Three times we were blessed with big stars to come out of this city. They're legendary. They're talked about no matter where I go around the country. When people find out I'm from Kingsport, the first question is, do you know Ron and Don Wright? You see, that's the legacy that Ron leaves behind. It's unbelievable. You know, 1988, I helped promote my first wrestling event in the city of Kingsport. I was 14 years old and working for Ronnie West, who was right there in the main event, Ron Wright. 1991, Southern States Wrestling, we're trying to get up off the ground. We run our first big time promotion, part of Fun Fest 1991. Record setting crowd for this company 25 years later. Who was right there at ringside? Ron Wright, helping his brother Don Wright and Wayne Rogers come out on top against the champion at the time, Skyfire, who went on to be an ECW star at Easy Money, and two other local legends around here, Hoot Gibson and Rick Connors. Ron Wright's thumbprints are on every professional wrestling card around here. I don't matter who you are, what generation you are, you know Ron Wright if you're a wrestling fan and live in this part of the country. And that's through this program and through my book coming out and everything else that we're doing. We're going to make sure that everybody knows about the legends that came through here. Not just Ron Wright, Don Wright, Whitey Caldwell, Frankie Kane, Lynn Rossi. Wrestling didn't start with the big bang of national TV, national cable in the early 80s. It didn't start with the Monday Night Wars. No, wrestling was here 100 years ago. This city supported professional wrestling for many years. Ron Wright himself was a wrestling fan going up to the wrestling matches on Wednesday night to see Wild Bill Caney and the Corsica brothers and everybody of that era. I grew up a fan of Ron Wright going to see him at the wrestling matches. Somewhere out there is the next generation and it's all because of the people that came before us. We're almost at the end of the program and I just want to say this. Ron Wright was a local businessman. He's a local hero and a local legend. He's a one of a kind, as I said earlier, and we all owe him a bit of gratitude, and I want to take this time and say thank you, sir. 
Bless you, sir. Bless your family. I know they're going through a hard time, and everybody that knows you is going through a hard time. But you, sir, you are the number one man, the number one hillbilly, the king of king sport, the motor mouth, the biggest box office attraction that we have ever seen or ever will see in this part of the country when professional wrestling comes. You know, there's a lot of big stars come out of here, NFL players, Major League Baseball players, NASCAR race car drivers, but I want you to think about this. When Ron Wright was on top, when he was at the Civic Auditorium or the Legion Street wreck in Johnson City, one out of four people were going to the wrestling matches in the city population. 25% of the population a month was going to see the wrestling matches. That's the legacy that they leave. They were talked about on the streets, on the television, in the newspaper. Ron Wright, we respect you. We pray for your family. And as we leave here today, sir, we give you the biggest honor we can with the 10-bell salute.